Good evening. Good evening. It is a privilege and an honor to be able to stand before you this evening and preach the word. The question that we all must ask is, do we forget to pray? We just sang a song about it. And if we forget to pray, I fear that we forget the value of prayer. Do we really know the value of prayer? Do we take time and dedicate it to prayer? Brethren, prayer is very, very, very important in the life of a Christian. It is the way we communicate with our Heavenly Father and the Creator of all things. It is what we use as an avenue to go before our Father in prayer and cast all of our worries and anxieties on Him. It is the way that we can build a relationship with God. How are we to build a relationship with an individual, whether it be the creator of all things or just maybe a fellow brother and sister in Christ or a family member in blood if we do not communicate with that individual? Prayer is very, very valuable. In the book of James, in James chapter 5, I encourage you to turn there with me. That's where we will be this evening. James chapter 5, starting in verse 13. And we'll be going through verse 16. And in this passage, James talks about the subject of prayer and what it can do. We are going to look at this passage and notice four different things. In verse 13, we'll notice that prayer is valuable because prayer offers comfort, it offers peace, and it releases burdens of this life. In verse 14 through 15, we see that prayer is valuable because it heals the sick and the diseased. Also in verses 15 and going through verse 16, we see that it provides a way of asking for forgiveness. And finally, we'll notice that in verse 16, we also see that prayer is valuable because it works. Prayer is valuable because it works. But before we go into this study in James chapter 5, noticing the value of prayer, we have to understand two different things. We have to know what we're talking about. What does the word value or valuable mean, and what is prayer? What does prayer mean? The word value or valuable means the regard that something is held to deserve the importance, the worth, or usefulness of something or someone. It is useful. It deserves importance. It, it, uh, it's worth something. The word prayer, uh, and this is a very generic definition, if you will, is prayer is a solemn request for help or an expression of thanks addressed to God or an object of worship. Brethren, prayer is something that is of great importance. Prayer, it has great worth and is useful for us as Christians, especially to express our gratitude and worries to our Heavenly Father. Let's go ahead and read this passage together. In James chapter 5, we're going to read it as a whole and then break it down as we go through it. Starting in verse 13, it says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the, and the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working or the king james would say the prayer or the um, the prayer of a righteous man um does uh, the uh, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much brethren prayer is valuable and prayer is valuable because number one prayer offers comfort peace and release of burdens in verse 13 it says anyone is anyone among you suffering let him pray james says is anyone among you suffering? In the time of suffering, you need to set time to pray to God. These sufferings, or the word suffering that James is talking about, is literally to suffer evils, hardships, or troubles in this life. 
things that, that affect us physically, things that affect us emotionally, mentally, things as we go throughout this life, we will deal with things that, that we have to suffer through. Brethren, we, we must pray in those times. The audience that James is writing to, if you look back in James chapter 1 and verse 1, it says that he is writing to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. These Jewish converts, they are dealing with some persecution. Their persecution uh, deals with things such as being driven out of their homes. They're being put to death. They're being separated from their families. They're being thrown in prison. And many, many other things they're having to deal with. Brethren, James says, in those times when you're being persecuted, when you're being driven out of your homes, when you are being put to death, brethren, you need to pray in those times of suffering. Prayer is valuable because it brings peace and joy. They were dealing with some troublesome times and suffering many things. James tells them, you ought to pray. The psalmist would write in Psalm 55 and verse 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. God cares for his people and has provided a way for his people to cast their anxieties upon him. First Peter chapter five and verse seven. Brethren, prayer is very, very valuable. Prayer is valuable because um, it, it offers peace in a time of suffering. And God has given that privilege, that gift to his children to be able to go before him in prayer and say, dear heavenly father, I am dealing with, with things that are troubling me. I am suffering. I'm dealing with persecution. I'm dealing with struggles in this life. Please give me strength. Give me peace. Comfort me. Brethren, prayer is valuable because it brings peace, but it is also valuable because number two, prayer it heals the sick and the diseased. In verses 14 through 15, verse 14, it says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. In verse 15, it says, And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. James is speaking of one who is feeble, one who is sick, a person who is physically ill, somebody who is battling a disease. James says that prayer will help heal the one who is sick. Now, when people read this passage, brethren, I know of some people who will say, I've even worked with some of these people. It is a very, very sad state of mind saying, well, if the Lord will raise them up, how come I had to suffer a death in the family? How come when I pray to the Lord, that my father may be healed or that my child may uh, be healed of this cancer or some, whatever this disease may be. How come he did not raise him up? There is no God. Brethren, the Lord and our Heavenly Father is not a genie that grants us wishes. And that may be a harsh thing to say when concerning a, uh, a concept of asking for a child to be healed and they pass from this world. It is a very sad thing to comprehend, but brethren, it doesn't work like that necessarily. We have to understand that it is not only, uh, that this passage is not the only passage, passage that talks about prayer. Yes, it says that God will raise him up, but we have to understand the context of the passage. Praying to God, like we said, is not like asking for wishes to be granted. Uh, if you look in the New Testament and you go through the gospel accounts, you read about the life of Jesus Christ. We read about the many great things that he did, brothers and sisters. I declare that you declare to you that Jesus is probably not probably he is the best man, uh, deity in the flesh that walked this earth. There was no one greater than he, but yet he suffered. And even in Matthew chapter twenty six and verse thirty nine, we read about how he prayed to the Father, saying, "Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me." Brethren, he knew that he was going to have to suffer. He was going to have to suffer many things for humanity. It was a great suffering, something that he would have to suffer mentally, something that he would have to suffer emotionally, physically. All of his friends would abandon him. People would spit in his face. He would have to endure the cross and the scourging. And he said, Father, if it be your will, please let this cup pass from me. 
But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Brethren, it's not that Jesus does, it's not that our Heavenly Father does not answer our prayers, it's how he answers our prayers. It's not that he just abandons us, it's either, yes, I will um, answer this prayer, or maybe sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is yes, but it's in due time. I know all things, you do not know everything. I know when everything needs to be placed in the right exact moment. Trust in me and your prayers will be answered. Brethren, prayer is valuable because it does heal the sick and the diseased. And here it does say that the Lord will heal and raise the individual up. We may not understand why God does what he does, but it is because we are not deity. We are not God. But we can know that God works in mysterious ways. We do not, I do not know how providence works, brothers and sisters. I do not know, I, I cannot tell you, my, my mind is finite. I am not infinite. I only know that God is all-powerful, all-knowing, and that he can do all things. And that if he says that prayer can work, I believe that prayer can work. I know that it can work because I believe and trust in God. Brethren, we may not know how prayer works, but we do know it's valuable because the Lord said, if you pray for that individual who is sick, he will be saved. But you're probably thinking, this is kind of contradictory, isn't it? You're saying, in one hand, that he will raise him up, but then we know, we just talked about how if we do pray and the answer is no, how, how is that raising him up? Well, prayer is valuable, and it works, and it can heal the sick. It says that the Lord, the Lord will raise him up he will raise him up in either two different ways it says that he will raise him up if he lives the prayers and if the prayer is answered that he will live physically he lives and he is raised up and healed physically if he dies the prayers answered by God saying no but it's not a sad thing brothers and sisters if he dies he is raised up in a spiritual sense now let me explain myself here Throughout this life, we are faced with many things. We go through many temptations, but if we are faithful unto death, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, we will receive a crown of life. Brothers and sisters, there is more to this life than just the earthly things and the physical life. There is something to come. And we must take into account, as Jesus says, not my will, but your will be done. We have to understand that there is something much much greater than this life and if an individual passes from this world it is not a sad thing in fact it is a joyful thing prayer is valuable because it can heal the sick it can heal the sick in a physical sense and if the prayer if the answer is no dear brothers and sisters i suggest that it is still a happy moment because that individual that brother and sister is saved number three Prayer is valuable because it provides a way of asking for forgiveness. Look at verses 15 through 16. In verses 15 it says, And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Now, uh, that you may be healed, this is, now, this is not referring to what we have just uh, studied over a couple of passages ago. It's not talking about a physical sense. This is now talking about a spiritual sense it is not referring to healing of a disease or sickness but rather a spiritual healing a forgiving of sins if you will James says that if a man has sinned let him pray and ask for forgiveness um, if a man or woman has put on Christ in baptism they have the gift of going before our Heavenly Father in prayer and asking for forgiveness Prayer is a gift and a privilege. It is something that we do not need to take for granted. Brethren, I, I can personally tell you, growing up, I didn't really know what prayer was. Uh, even studying, growing, having the, the privilege and being blessed of growing up in a spiritual household, I had to learn what prayer was. And for the longest time, I took it for granted. 
I, I didn't know exactly what it was. I knew that I could go before my Heavenly Father in prayer and request things if it be His will. We read about this and actually in James chapter 4 and verses 13 through 17. If it be your will, let these things happen. I knew that um, if we went before our Heavenly Father in prayer, we could cast all of our anxieties upon Him, as we already noticed in 1 Peter. But I took it for granted. And I feel like at least in one point of our lives as Christians that we we do take it for granted we we don't really know the value of it really have you ever heard the saying um, uh, you don't really know the value of something until it's taken away from you. you you don't appreciate something until you don't have it anymore brethren we need to realize that prayer is a very very valuable thing and and I will say this and it can go into much more detail but in a general sense in this context having prayers answered in the way that we have talked about, Christians only have that privilege. I understand in Acts chapter 10 we read about Cornelius how he um, had his prayers answered in seeking the gospel. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in asking in the things that only a Christian can ask for. Somebody that's in the church and they go before their heavenly father in prayer, the things that only a Christian has the privileges um, of asking of Prayer is valuable because only a Christian can ask for forgiveness in prayer. Only if they are baptized in the um, waters that represent the, the blood and the burial and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They only have that privilege of asking for forgiveness. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, read about if we confess our sins, that implies that we have to ask him through prayer. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the same book, only a few chapters later, in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 15, it says, And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked him. Prayer is of great value because it provides an avenue for the Christian to ask forgiveness of sins. How can we receive something if we do not ask of it? Now, growing up, my I'll tell you this, and uh, Haley will probably laugh. My favorite, favorite meal of all time is cheeseburgers. If you ever have me over at your house, just if, don't even bother asking me what I want. Just say, we're having cheeseburgers, and you will have a happy Anthony. I will tell you, all day long I will be happy. If I'm having a bad day, just give me a cheeseburger. I love cheeseburgers. Now, I'm in school. I'm a college individual. I do not have, I do now, now that I'm married. Um, but before I was married, I did not have home-cooked meals. I had to go out and either get ramen or hopefully I had some money to go get something from a fast food restaurant. But before I was married and I'd go home to my parents, my mom would say, hey, you're coming home for the weekend, right? I'd say, yes, ma'am, I'm coming home. What do you want for, for supper? I'll cook anything you want. Cheeseburgers, all right. How on earth is she going to know that I want that for supper if I do not ask of it? She may know that it's my favorite because I'm her child. But how is she going to know that I want it if I do not ask for it? Maybe I'm, I'm craving something else. Maybe I'm craving, uh, maybe I'm craving uh, fried chicken, but she cooks cheeseburgers. How is she going to, or how am I going to get what I would like to have? And this is a cheeseburger if I do not ask of it. Brethren, God knows what we need. He knows what we, what we need in this life. But he's not just going to give it to us. We must ask of it. We must ask him in prayer what we need. If it be his will, let these things happen. How can we receive something if we, can, if we do not ask of it? How are we going to build a relationship if we do not talk or communicate? Just like parents knowing what their children need before their kids ask them for it, our Heavenly Father knows what we need before we ask him matthew chapter 6 and verse 8 but if we wish to receive these things that we need brethren we need to ask of it how are we going to ask for the remission of our sins with the concept of knowing that we are that we have put on christ in baptism we are living the christian life but we are human we're going to make mistakes we're going to sin we're going to have sin in our life 
That's why Jesus came to this earth, John chapter 3 and verse 16, and died for all of humanity. But how are we going to have our sins forgiven as a Christian if we do not ask our Heavenly Father for it? He knows that we need to have our sins forgiven, but he's not just going to say, I'll let this one slide. He's not, he is all just, and he will do what is right. And what is right is asking him for forgiveness. And the only way for that, brethren, is through prayer. Prayer is very, very valuable. It is important. It is useful to the Christian. Finally, prayer is valuable because it works. Prayer works. Look at verse 16, at the, the latter part of verse 16. It says, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Righteous. The word righteous, it means one who is morally right or living morally right according to the scriptures. Brother, I fear that people in the church today, sadly people in the church, knowing that prayer is something that we are even commanded to do, it's an act of worship. It's something that we participate in worship as a family, as a congregation on the first day of the week. We are commanded to do it. Even though it is something that is commanded, something that is important, we do not give it enough credit. We do not give it the importance or the value and acknowledge it for what it is. Sometimes I feel like, as we mentioned at the very beginning, we only see it as something that we uh, can go before our Heavenly Father in prayer and say, I would like this. Dear Heavenly Father, please let me have. Father, if I could just, I encourage you and challenge you that when you start your prayer, when in your prayer life, when you begin your prayer to our Heavenly Father, do not, I encourage you please do not say dear heavenly father may i please dear heavenly father can i dear heavenly father me myself i started out with saying dear heavenly father you are awesome you are the greatest that there is there is no one like you you are all powerful you are almighty start out with a um a pro a proclamation of worship if you will, a proclamation or acknowledgement that he is deity, that he is all powerful. And then go in to the prayer and say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. You ever heard the song, Count Your Many Blessings, One by One? I wonder how many times we do that in our prayer life. It's not bad to ask for things, but we need to have the heart or the mindset that James actually speaks of in James chapter 4, starting in verse 13. Do not boast about tomorrow. Do not think that these things will happen. Pray to the Lord and say, if it be your will, let these things happen. We need to have the mindset of it's God's will. God has a plan. God knows more than me, even though I may not know the future and there are things that I might want or that I think I might need. God truly knows what I need. And if I pray for the things that I need, God will provide those things. He will bless the Christian. He will give the things that are, um, that, are, that are needed to that individual if we ask of it. And it says plainly right here that the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Or as the King James says, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We sometimes confuse miracles with the providence of God through prayer. Uh, we think that if we say that God has answered a prayer, that he has somehow directly interceded and um, has done something miraculous. We, we touched a little bit on the providence of God. And this is not the, the sermon about providence, but I think prayer has a lot to do with providence. I think they go hand in hand. When we pray, God is in control of all things. Now, obviously, we have the word. We have the complete scripture. We do not have miracles today. I'm not suggesting to you that miracles are happening. I do not know how providence works. I just know that it does. And I know that if we ask of things, that God will give it within the, if it is his will. And it says that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Prayer is valuable because it works. I really don't know how it works. I don't know how providence works. I don't know how God works behind the scenes. I just know that he is all powerful, all knowing, and that he does work. And that if he says that something works, 
I know that it works. I can have the confidence that it works. Prayer works. It has power. It can make a difference. Therefore, it is very valuable to the Christian and should be valued it should be valuable to us, that is, if we are followers of God. We may not know how it works. That is because we are not God, and that's fine. If God wanted us to know, he would have told us. If the creator of all things says something works, we should believe it. Prayer is of great importance and has great value. But you know, in all of this, there is a, in its context, there is a running thread it says that um, if anyone has committed sin, let him be forgiven. Let him uh, let him ask a let him offer up a prayer to God and ask for forgiveness. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. If you know the audience, which we touched on a little bit, it's Christians. This is applying to the first century Christians, the church of today, brethren. We are Christians. I hope we are. I don't know all of you personally. You know that you are a Christian or you know that you are not a Christian. Based off of the word of God, you can know if you are saved or not. Everything that we have talked about and the value of prayer can only be applied to the Christian. Are you a Christian? These things that we talked about, you cannot have as a privilege or as a gift or as a blessing if you are not baptized. Are you baptized for remission of your sins? You know, it may be the case that you have been baptized. You have put on Christ in baptism. This does apply to you. You do have a prayer life. You have in the past once realized how valuable prayer is, but for whatever reason, you have taken it for granted. And you have uh, sadly kind of just seen it as something that we do every first day of the week and maybe something that we do before a meal. But you want to make those things right. You have acknowledged that prayer is valuable. And you want to do something about it and you want to make your prayer life better or maybe it's the case that you have not put on Christ in baptism maybe you cannot have these privileges because you are not baptized for the mission of your sins but you want to you want to have these privileges you want to be able to say that prayer is valuable to me or maybe it's the case that you just need prayers for strength but whatever the case may be I plead that you come now as together we stand and as we stand